before time immortal, the dark and stormy nights arose from creation's primordial nectar. Brought to this world as both muse and master, to deliver mortals from misery and the mundane. Welcome, lords and ladies, it's the dark and stormy nights. <laughs> Boys and girls, welcome back to the Dark and Stormy Nights. Mm. We have new equipment today. We're trying it out. I hope our sound quality is better. It, I think it sounds better. Yeah, we keep arguing over levels, but hopefully it's all good. Yeah, we'll work it out. Let us know what you think. Um, so here we go. We're, we're working on what's 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 the project today? What are we doing today? Uh, it's supposed to be Chapter 5, I believe. <coughs> chapter 5? Uh, yeah, we're on Chapter 5. Okay, and uh, Odin has written us some stuff for today. Hello. By the way? Oh, yeah, yeah. By the way, this is Loki. This is Odin. And? I'm still here. So, in case you couldn't tell, because our base and trouble and everything has changed because of the change in equipment, uh, I'm the sexy one. (laughs) So, just so you know. All right. So, uh, Odin's going to to read us some pieces, and we're going to talk about how this will play into the story. Right. right. Yeah, we were doing it by parts, uh, which was based on a scene change. Um, I probably have like five of them, but given the, how we break in this show up in three parts, we're going to uh, combine a few. And I like this new method. I think so far, so good. Let's see how this goes today. Okay. Uh, you guys at home, let us know. We've got uh, ways to contact us in the mid-rolls and the bumpers. Also want to apologize because while I do know words and I'm pronounce them very well in my head, they trip over between my tongue and my lips, and sometimes I just really stumble. So I I apologies eat. in advance. He's stoopy. I, yeah, sadly, it sounds that way. Okay. Okay. Wilhelm sat with his legs crossed on an uncomfortable wooden chair in the basement of St. Mary's. He held his pipe in his right hand, and his left stroked the chin of his beard. A homely woman in her early 50s was droning on about the burdens of being a were-possum while juggling the responsibilities of maintaining a home. He could not care less. His attention was on Philip. Philip stood about five foot ten, but easily had five stones on him. His hair was chestnut in color and his eyes a deep green. He was in his early thirties, but spoke with the depth of a man twice his age and carried himself with the joie de vivre of a man ten years his junior. Wil- Wilhelm had been attending various wear anonymous groups around the city for nearly a year, and they had been no help at all. Well, that's not completely true as hearing others commiserate in the suffering did seem to ease his sense of alienation. The problem was the group structure. They wanted you to befriend the inner beast and make peace with it. How could they not understand this was an infection? It didn't matter if it was viral or bacterial or spiritual. It, it was unwanted. Willem nearly gave up on the group when Philip walked in six weeks ago. Now he came at least three times a week. More when his flatmates were making a ruckus. The problem was, Philip and him were worlds apart. Philip was well-spoken, but his rough hands and stained fingertips betrayed a more physical life style, or at least a station. He took part of life actively, in it, not just on the outside watching it. He was easily a decade younger. He wasn't infected. He was born a lycanthrope. Worst of all, he didn't mind it. He just wanted more control over it. Willem had to admit that he was just making excuses. Fine. Carpe diem. Today was the day he was going to speak to him. Outside the group, that is. Willem was glad the blasted man pig wouldn't put on his bleeding pants today. If he did, he'd have a strange grotesque man to handle, or an untrained pig to to drag in tow. Willem silently debated which was worse. How am I supposed to explain to my wife I had relations with a fair raccoon? She's Not aware. She wouldn't understand. Wilhelm pivoted his head violently to satisfy the morbid curiosity that was birthed with this strange utterance. A small, balding and graying man was sobbing into his hands, his shoulders heaving with his fitful breaths. I'm afraid that we're out of time, intoned the group moderator in a flat voice. Wilhelm grabbed his umbrella and overcoat and took several long, hurried strides towards Philip, who was exiting the room. Do you... Do you got time to grab a point? He asked, the upward lilt of the question going an octave too high. William, right? Yes, thanks. I mean, sure. Um, Did you say yes? No, but yes, I mean, sure. 
I've got some time. Did you want to discuss where stuff? Wilhelm realized that he was standing a bit too close as if Philip was leaning on the door and could not retreat any further. His breath smelled of spearmint. Excuse me, the werepossum almost shouted at him. Wilhelm backed away and let some of the group exit before following Philip out. So, Philip inquired as they walked up the stairs to the back door of the church. I forgot, Wilhelm said lamely. Wear stuff, right? He prompted. Yes, he seized upon the opportunity to have something intelligent to say. As you're a legacy lycanthrope, I thought you could help me with something. After a deafening pause and a blank expression from Philip, Wilhelm continued, Have you heard it go the other way? I'm not sure I know what you mean, Philip responded, with those utterly sincere, greener-than-green eyes. Wilhelm sighed. Instead of a man becoming an animal, an animal becoming a man, he said all out in a rush. Yes, I think I have, but let's discuss this somewhere less public, Philip said as he pointed to the door that would return them to the normal world where wares don't exist outside of folktales. End of part one. Okay. And I forgot how to use a microphone for a moment there. <laughs> <coughs> and scene. Um, I apologize. We're getting used to the new equipment. I think it's going to take a minute for it to get used to it, but uh, not too bad overall. And if you hear a slight buzz, that's the new equipment. We're working out the we're working out the kinks. I'm not sure it's recording as badly as we're hearing it, but uh, maybe not. Um, I hope not. Anyways, we'll find out after post. So uh, it's gradually getting better. All right. So. I, I I loved hearing about um, um, Philip's finger tits, um, finger tips, <laughs> <laughs> and you did better this time on your read through without calling him William. Yeah, in my head I keep transposing that. I don't know why. Uh, I, I mean, it's not terrible. I think it, it means the same thing, doesn't it? <laughs> Actually, yes. So, I mean, it, it literally is German for William. Okay, I think it's a good setup. It's a good start. We talked about uh, kind of going this direction. I thought it was funny interjecting the. Uh, <laughs> the affair with a feral raccoon. <laughs> it is well, I, you know, it's I a do want to know: is 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 the feral raccoon where, or is it just because? No, no. He, oh, it, it, really? it, it wasn't really addressed, but he is a were raccoon. Okay, it was just he's a, a were raccoon, raccoon, but probably this is a rabies. feral raccoon that is not aware. Yeah. Oh Lord! Oh my goodness! But he was in beast form, so he wasn't really in control. I mean, so. But it's. I mean, even in raccoon form. He's not cheating. It's his disease. It, right? I mean, yeah, now his disease is rabies. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. Okay. All right. I think it's a good setup. I think it's a good start uh, for it. And uh, so from here, you were trying to set this up to... Well, I'm trying to show a slow romantic build, although I didn't want to drag it out too long. Right. And I'm trying to establish, you know, him going to the meetings and that right establishing flair, the that, that the where's anonymous and sure. then getting an intro into Philip and and his um, crush maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it portrayed that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a good start. I, I I was hoping that the narration would show some of his internal monologue without exactly saying it, like right. in some of the descriptive terms I've used. I was hoping that conveyed some of his feeling. Did anyone? Yeah. No, I definitely think that it does. I don't want to lead the witness. I'm just asking. No, no. I, I, I felt his nervousness. I felt his, uh, but I also felt like he's intense. almost tripping over his words because yeah. he was. Yeah. 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 I mean, I know some of that is Odin as well. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Now, do you feel like that the reader will get the inflections that you threw in there in the reading? Never as well as, as a book on tape kind of thing. Is but I do feel, yeah, I, I actually did phonetically spell out the do do do. You know, thing. Okay. Yeah, no. I, I have to I dot, mean, dot, dot. I took it that like way. That. Well, I mean, it definitely felt more real because of his inflections and because of the way he read it and stuff like that. But I'm just curious as to how the reader might pick that up. No, I didn't bother much with an English accent because, yeah, I didn't feel it. Sure, sure. But, you know. Um, yeah, that, that's all I'm asking is, is there a way to maybe push the reader along, make them read it the way you did? You I know? think if he has, like, the dot, dot, dots in there, like, I mean, as, yeah. as a reader you hear the voice, you know, as long as those kind of stutters and the kind of like nervousness is portrayed in the character's voice in your writing, then, I mean, I think that they'll, they'll get the gist of it for right. sure. Yeah. 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 I'm just trying to see if there's set up because I think it was good. I was just curious as to whether that was him, him throwing it, it in the way right. that he meant it to be read or I was trying to do both. And I do think that audibly 
you know, reading out loud, I was able to convey more than the text alone will ever. I mean, I, th- there's limitations. Sure. But right. There, but also, as we've been saying all along, this is the rough draft. So we can always absolutely. add more of those inflections and more yeah. of those feelings. And I, I wanted to add a little more description here and there. But I was under a bit of time crunch, and I also felt that it would slow the pacing, which is already slower than I'd want it to be. Right. So, But again, that's something that gets fixed in editing. You polish mm. it up and clean it and streamline it a little bit. But, you know, I, I, I feel that, like, you don't have to describe a whole room and everything and the temperature and the this and the that and, you know, the dust motes and the sunlight, unless it's relevant, if you just give them a few details. Like, I, I described the crappy wooden chair he's sitting in. You know, little things that I think there might you. be a few details, though, that, that can be added in. Oh, maybe, no, no doubt. Maybe the table of crappy snacks at the back of the room by the door. I thought about the it. The awful stale coffee, you know. But, he, I mean, he's in the middle of the meeting. That's more of a beginning. Do we have a chain smoker thing? in the group? You know, I mean, is there that? Because I feel like that's. You guys are big on scenery and world building, whereas well, I'm, I'm much more somebody who's who's pushing the story and who, who leaves some things up to the reader. Now, don't get me wrong. I agree that some of those aspects help build a feeling of the scene. So, yeah, like the guy who, the annoying person next to them reeking like cigarette smoke. Absolutely. Um, Or somebody with B.O. Right. Oh, there's always at least one. But being too descriptive of your scene and your world, it it can pull you out of it a little bit. Drags you into a freaking well, bog. Anybody it slows who's read down the story. So you have to find a happy medium. Certain books by Stephen King, like The Stand, <laughs> 1,141 pages. Insomnia. I mean, The Stand was a great story, Two months of my story, summer though. as a teenager. Holy hell. <laughs> Holy hell. I do not need to know about every bowel movement. Sure. I don't. Uh, well, and that's not what I'm suggesting. All I'm suggesting right, is right, right. that, you know, let's put them in one of these meetings, especially anybody who's never been to one, you know. Right. I think we've all seen them on TV, but yeah. Maybe. Maybe we have. I don't know. I'm not going to make any assumptions about other people's lives. But then again, there's some people who are like, who have been to the meetings and they hear some of these details and they're like, oh yeah. Yeah, I was uh, hoping to elicit a little bit of that. You know. Yeah, the shitty folding chairs. <laughs> right, right. So, okay. Um, so do you want to kind of set us up for the next part? What, what are we going to talk about next? Well, uh, I have... Five parts, but they're of different lengths. The next two are probably a similar length to what I've just read, and the last two are really small. Um, but yeah, it goes from there to the pub, and from the pub, we're going to move on to uh, him looking forward to uh, meeting up with him again, and then you know, so uh, uh, what more? I guess with Karen. What What are you trying to portray with the next couple scenes? Well, I mean, as we've outlined before. Eventually, Wilhelm goes missing. I mean, right. sorry, uh, Philip. Philip goes missing. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. Karen's coming on strong. Uh, he does a little bit of investigation and eventually gets abducted. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, maybe we take and because the next part's gonna be pretty long, so we'll take our break now. I and mean, we'll if come you back want to. And you can read the next part. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I'm reading uh, two parts and then two parts. So okay, yeah. yeah. So this is going to throw us off a little bit anyway. So we're going to go ahead and take this early break. And then we'll come back with these next this next long section. Okay. So here we go. Loki, what is best in life? To crush your word count goals, to have them edited for you, and to hear the Dark and Stormy Nights podcast on Podbean, Google Play Music, and iTunes. That is good. All right, so we're back with the next part. Uh, you're going to read section two, and then we're going to discuss as needed. Okay. So, uh, go ahead, I guess. Sure. The pub was fairly empty, as it was early afternoon on a rather seasonable Sunday. After the third pint and a rousing round of darts, that despite Philip's best attempt to throw, Wilhelm still only won one in out of three. They sat in a booth in the far corner of the bar. My dad collected books on the subject of lycanthropy. Supposedly, the stuff you're supposed to know is passed down from father to son, on through the generations. Problem is, my dad was an orphan. So he bought every book on the matter he could find. Most of it, I can tell you from experience, is utter codswallop. But I did read in one of them, a red leather one, if if I remember right, that it can go the other way. Not naturally, though. Lycanthropy is either a gift or a curse, but always magical in origin. Animals can sense magic, but they can't wield it. If you know a um, uh, reverse lycanthrope, then it 
probably was the victim of a hex or an errant spell. Not that I know how to fix it. I never got into the occult stuff. Weird energy, not my thing. The way he could switch between common slang and higher speech was like a high-born man outfitted for a ball, accessorizing with a boonier of dandelions. Wilhelm was befuddled and entranced. For you, sir, the bartender placed a glass of absinthe in front of Wilhelm. From the lady over there, the bartender pointed a stubby finger at the only female patron in the bar. Pub. The woman waved in turn, then grabbed her drink and sashayed her over, ignoring the leering eyes of the other patrons. Her beauty was unparalleled. She had pale blonde hair and bright blue eyes, but her most obvious feature arrived moments before her. Hi, I'm Karen, the woman said as she extended a gloved hand, palm down towards Wilhelm. Pleased to meet you, Karen, he said as he gently shook her hand as a faint scent of vanilla and something else wafted towards him. Might I join you? She asked as she pushed Wilhelm to the side and further into the booth with her wide and shapely rear. I'm not usually this forward, but you have a certain animal magnetism, she cooed through pursed lips and a palm resting on his cheek. If you know what I mean, she said with a knowing wink. I I'm Philip, he said as he thrust an overeager hand towards her. Yes, I'm sure you are, she said as she turned towards Wilhelm. And you are? Karen asked as she placed a hand on Wilhelm's thigh. Wilhelm? He all but yelped the second syllable of his name. Y you don't sound German. Are you German, Wilhelm? She asked as she leaned in close, her hand still on his thigh. My grandfather was. He coughed and moved his thigh upwards to dislodge her hand. Was he a shifter too? Karen whispered in it, the question in his ear. I is, is that what brings you over, Karen? Ar are you two-natured? A lady doesn't tell, she said girlishly, giggling into her left hand and gently bopping him on the nose with her index finger of her right hand. Wilhelm pulled out a pocket watch and raised his eyebrows dramatically. Well, we you look at the time? Terribly late, I'm afraid. Must be going. He pulled out an, uh, un and unfolded a flyer for a Weir's Anonymous group and placed it in front of Karen. Well, I if you're in need to talk about it, they have groups all over. So sorry to be so curt. But I must be going. Please excuse me, he said as he all but pushed her out of the booth. Karen stood in front of the table as Wilhelm exited the pub with confusion and anger openly displayed on her face. So do you live around here, Karen? Philip asked. Her only response was a swift exit that Philip admired from his seat in the booth as he drank Wilhelm's ab absinthe. All right, so... <clears throat> um, <coughs> it felt very much... It, it, uh, uh, too natured. Was that what you said? First off, uh, at one of the times I've yeah I used a lot of different to wear as two nature. That's interesting. Uh, I feel like that's a new piece of lore that maybe we had in there that that's something they'll be called. Yeah, it was cute. There was actually a couple things I really liked about it. I liked the way that you described Philip's speech um, with the uh, I forget the word that I'm looking for, but like comparing it to like a, a fancy dress with a boutonniere of dandelions. That was cute. Um, at, but also. Um, I liked the kind of like interaction between Wilhelm and Karen. Um, but it's, are you portraying Philip as straight here where he's kind of, it does seem like he's straight. I, I have not disclosed, but he's actually bi. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay. But um, I'm not entirely, I, I think that he's not positive on Wilhelm's intentions. Uh, and I feel like he's flubbing this date. <laughs> I agree. I, uh, I would not be happy. On Wilhelm's end, personally. Yeah. Well, well, Karen just torpedoed it, and unfortunately, she is so overtly attractive that it, it would have ruined it anyways. There was, there, it, it's a hard nose dive to come out of. So even with the, I want to see your manager haircut, <laughs> she's uh, overtly attractive. Okay, well, I mean, but... We never discussed her hair color, but we've used so many other people with the red hair, I felt overdone. Oh, so I think I, it's black. Yeah. So I gave her a pale blonde. I don't pale know. Pale blonde? Uh, I, I don't know. We I think really she's Japanese. It. Yeah, I was thinking black. I'm thinking jet Well, black. maybe we change it. Okay, like anyway, black, like he whatever, did point out that black. she's rather curvy, yeah. so you yes, <laughs> can the, see how that the, would be attention grabbing. The large butt, perfect, being what she is, you know, uh... I, I would like to see how she pulls that off, personally. I, I'm having a hard time imagining it, other than the fact that, that 
One of them gets knocked towards the wall <laughs> with it. Yeah, yeah. She basically s- sits in the booth and scoots him over. Right, right. As she's asking. No, no. I'm say. imagining. I've I've seen okay, something sure along those lines uh, in real life. So that's kind of funny. Yeah, I was trying to portray her as always asking permission, but really being aggressive. Just taking and it pushing. anyway. Yeah. yeah. No, right, right, right. I think it was good. I May like the I nature doing it that's anyways. portrayed. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mind if I sit here as she slams his ass over? Yeah, it's cute. Uh, I actually know women like that. So, <laughs> so that's kind of funny. I mean, sometimes you got to be assertive to get what you want. Well, the thing is, as a straight man, I wasn't sure how well I'm portraying either a gay relationship or a woman. So, you know... Uh, I am curious. They're all confusing, so well, don't I mean, feel bad. Ultimately, she's a man-eater, so I don't think that her being aggressive is a problem here. Oh, I, I think it's here she comes. Oh, Lord. I think, that it's, I think that it's kind of perfect, actually. So okay. I think it's great. Keep going. Yeah. All right. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody section. likes my... Yeah, go for it. Wilhelm stared at the grandfather clock as he smoked his pipe impatiently. He didn't wish to leave too early, or he would arrive early, and that might reek of desperation. He had already let a day pass as it was, and he wasn't going to mess it all up mere inches from the finish line of his temporal marathon. The minute hand loudly slammed into place, and William ejected from his chair like he was fired from a pistol. He quickly grabbed a flat cap and his umbrella and left the brownstone. His muscles were rigid as he forced himself to walk slower, his eagerness propelling him much too fast. After a few turns, he was on the main road that would would take him to St. Peter's, which hosted Wears Anonymous on Tuesdays. This was nice because it passed a tea house adjacent to a rare bookstore. William entered the tea house and found it rather cozy. The smell of exotic spices, flowers, tea leaves, and bergamot delighted his senses. Almost too much. (sighs) The change would be upon him soon. He always hated the week before the change. His joints ached, his senses heightened, his anger quick, and his hormones out of control. It was maddening. That smell... Any other day, he would never have noticed it. It made all the other in the tea house. Vanilla, with a a blend of jasmine and clove. He smelled that before from that aggressive woman. What was her name? Carol? No, not Carol. Karen. Yes, it was Karen. Willem ordered tea and scones and looked around for the owner of the scent. After looking at at his pocket watch, he decided he had time to investigate further. While not in his wolf form, Tracking by scent wasn't easy, but it was far from impossible. It proved much easier after he exited the tea house. Multiple trails of various age lay amongst the sidewalk, which meant she either walked in large loops or she had been pacing. He had just decided to follow it in the direction of the meeting when he heard a familiar clack, like the one her high-heeled boots made in the pub. Amongst the grinding sound of metal hooped wooden wheels, slowly etching the brick streets and the bustle of the city, he doubted he, he would have heard it if it wasn't for his gift, as Philip called it. Karen, William said as, as an accusation as he pivoted on his heel to the alley beside the tea house. Wilhelm, how wonderful to see you, Karen called out enthusiastically. Going to a meeting? As a matter of fact, I am. Care to escort a lady? Karen invited. I'd be delighted, Wilhelm said through clenched teeth. My, you seem more polished today, Karen spoke as she laced her arm through his. Hoping to impress one of the ladies at the meeting? (laughs) No, no. um, That pool is much too shallow, I'm afraid. He responded with a nervous chuckle. Oh, and am am I not worth impressing then? She said with an arch of her brow. I had no way of knowing that you would attend, William retorted in an apologetic tone. But you hoped, didn't you, lamb? Wilhelm cleared his throat and pulled at his cravat in order to clear his dry throat, brought on by, the, by nerves and a stall for time. In the end, he settled on a confused expression and just let time pass, hoping to let the implied question go unanswered. Okay. Uh, I like that this is a different church, is it not? Yeah, uh, St. Peter's. I don't know. I, we can rename them later. I was sure. just using placeholders. No, no, I, I, like, I like he's playing the circuit, you know, mm-hmm. that there's a few of them. Uh, that, that is a thing, from what I understand, to, to do a circuit sometimes. Uh, I like that uh, his change, some of the um, the abilities of, of what he has starts to manifest be- the week before the change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we haven't addressed it, but I feel like instead of doing the full moon thing, we do like a month anniversary of whenever he was turned. So whatever phase of moon it was then, 
you know, it's, it'd be like whenever that phase is uh, represented. Maybe. I, I'm not, That's I'm fine. Not totally as long it. as we stick with whatever lore we're establishing, I I'm do good. feel like the day after the change, though, it feels like a hangover. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least the day after. It's at least like being like really, really angry, and then you're like just like drained yeah, and just yeah. almost want a nap. Yeah, leave me alone day. <laughs> so. That works. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's cute. We kind of establish a little bit more that he's being stalked by Karen. Um, I think it works. Now, do did I gather that that he knows Karen's kind of? Is he kind of gathering that Karen's stalking? Well, him? It, it's easier for him because he's not interested in her at all. Right. No, I get that. Yeah. Uh, but I think that he's at least kind he of annoyed that he keeps bumping into her. Yeah, he's suspicious. I get that, but he doesn't know one way or another. Uh, what okay, because I feel on. like maybe he's onto her. He's at least annoyed by her. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Maybe he's suspecting that she's actively after him. Sure, sure. Maybe not in a after him sense, but in a flirtatious sense. Yeah. You know? Like she was waiting for him and she's like, oh, how do I tell her I am not interested? Right. So, okay. Which is good. I think that's what we need to establish at this point, so. Yeah. No, no. I mean, I think I think it was really good. I think that the whole thing is a, is a great setup. It really is funneling it to one direction. Which I like. I like that that you did set up that there is a circuit of these. Yeah, that's how I anonymous meetings. It. What I do wonder is, I kind of like to know: Are any of the churches in on this? Do they know that these are? Well, they're renting them out, so I gotta feel like not all of them would even care mm-hmm. to even investigate why it's being rented out. Sure, but more than a few have to know. Right, that's what I would think. I, I would think somebody knows about the supernatural. But given the time period, though, you know they're Lutheran. So it's not quite the uh, yeah, it's not too puritanical era kind of thing going on, <coughs> which is something we're working towards, anyways. Though, right? I mean, it's kind of yeah, but I mean the whole you know Inquisition, psycho, over the top Catholicism of sure. the day. You know, it, it, there it, it's it's a little more easier going. See, I, I like that. I feel like there is plenty of space to add detail, you know, but you you've really got to the meat of what the chapter needs to do, right? But there's little things we can add here and there to really kind of push it all together, at fill in some details in our world and everything Sure. without overwhelming. Right, you know? right. So I, I think that's good. Yeah, it's hard. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying it's hard for me to necessarily know what I'm going to put in until I'm writing that part. So right. like these details that I'm adding... They just happen. No, no, you it's good. I mean? Like I said, you, you haven't overwhelmed, but you've given enough. Okay. To kinda, I really do feel it. I, I, I mean, I was like, you know, when we were talking about you struggling with this a little bit earlier in the week, you know, just the time. Well, and, it was uh, mostly, I know it was mostly, mostly finding time to write. Yeah. But, you know, I was like, and then you get it done in the na- last couple of days, and I'm like, I wasn't expecting much, but honestly, no, I'm happy with no, it. No, it's it good. It really did turn out good. The only thing I feel like we left hanging is I think that at, at the last point of our uh, protagonist's mm-hmm. chapter, we, we kind of left the little naked man in the room hanging. <laughs> and I don't know that we necessarily yes. have addressed that, so we might need to well, squeeze actually, something about that in. I actually wanted to address that. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah, because we should I have was him. writing this right. largely from a Wilhelm chapter. Right. But as I was writing it, it occurred to me that I think this could be either a very long chapter or multiple chapters. Because what I feel that needs to happen, because there's a huge time lapse that's happening right now. Mm-hmm. Stuff's happening to other characters in the meantime. Yeah. And I've, I, I also didn't get a chance to address because there was a time crunch or whatever but i felt that and you'll you'll hear throughout the story as i read on that there's he's going to more and more meetings he's sure. taking less jobs yeah it does but feel then like he it's backs, amping up but yeah but then he backs off from the meetings and i think that he might dive into a little bit of work but i didn't have time to put that in there and i felt it was dividing from where i was going with this so i was thinking that if we took what i have here and spread it out and inserted various jobs and other okay. characters doing other things, we might have the makings of four chapters or something and then like broken up over yeah, more yeah, than yeah, one. It's yeah. not bad. We do have other stories to tell. And I, I do think And this is gonna time lapse a lot. Dale several weeks pass during this. I do feel Dale got left behind and Dale definitely needs a place in this, you know, because he's kind of part of how it all comes to be noticed, you know, that like Wilhelm Goes missing. Plus, we right. wanted to have them to do crappy jobs, so this is a great place with us. Right, time right. Lapse. I mean, there's definitely the potential to maybe take your your current chapter breaks and maybe squeeze in some additional, or or break it up amongst two right. chapters or whatever it is we're going to do. However, it ends up working. Um, I think you're definitely portraying what we tried to portray, but I mean, there's 
we do need to address the fact that we kind of left it at a oh shit moment. Well, I, I think the time crunch is what both a blessing and a curse, right? That well, it, it, it gets me off my butt to actually write, yeah, yeah, which right. is a problem for me. So doing this each week, you know, it's like all right, shit. Well, you have to do at least one every three weeks. I have to do one every three. I weeks. mean, I hate deadlines, Tier but has to do one they every can weeks. be useful motivators. So, but the problem with that is well, that seems great because you have three weeks to write something. But we don't necessarily know until the previous week we, what I'm supposed to write. Right. Exactly. So realistically, each of us have a week yeah. to write. Unfortunately, yeah. I, I've, I may have screwed the pooch in for us as a as a uh, the methodology of how we're attacking all of this, because we said that we wanted a certain thing to happen. Right. And that's where this chapter went. Right. But in writing it, I realized all that's not going to happen in a matter of a couple of days. So what I, I it ended up creating this this window of time, like a time lapse, yeah, which now tells me it's not one chapter. Sure. So I mean, maybe, I maybe think not. That we may have to write chapters or side material to shove into here. It could I don't be. know if we want to do that in the next week's episode, or is this something that we want to wait to the finalization and when we're revising the book and editing and all that stuff? You know, if we just want to move on. But I'm just saying that that that's something that it brings up. Right. It could be diary like. It could be a little bit of you know. Uh, Wilhelm Part One, Wilhelm Part Two, Will, and yeah, yeah, in there a little bit. It could be Dale, it could be Mary. Well, especially considering you don't want to Tarantino much. Uh, I mean, I mean, I kind of did that a bit with the last chapter. No, no. So. I mean, honestly, it feels like that's kind of how it's all coming out, right? It's little vignettes that are being pieced together because I did that too. You know, Dale, even though it was all Dale, was vignettes of the entire house. You know. Yeah, but that was a course over what thirty six hours or so. I mean, maybe, but the the fact of the matter is all this is turning out to be vignettes, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it, it could just be how this whole thing ends up written. Especially if 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 we were fortunate enough that some actually became of that, I think it would work better as a TV show. Then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it kind of has to happen that way just because we have so much going on, uh, and different people are kind of different, seeing different things. We're, we're writing from the perspective of a team, not necessarily just, you know, a main character. There's really no main character. They're right. all kind of coming to have their own place in the right. story. I actually think it's a fortunate happenstance of writing for us, too, because each of these little vignettes can be added or subtracted from rather easily mm -hmm. to move the story along, to fit in details that we wish to fit in, you know, to... Unless you know, they become proved to be foundational to the story. You know, like, if this detail is a good, like, uh, setup for something we're doing down the line. Right. No, that's what I'm saying, though. Yeah, I mean, it, it's easy to add or subtract as we need to with smaller vignettes, even though they may add up to much bigger chapters. That's true. It's easy to kind of insert information into the chapter breaks, you know, and, and yeah. right. rework it as we need to, like, because there's a natural break there. Right, yeah. I mean, like, I feel like maybe we, you know, I was thinking about we have very little about Robert. We know a lot more about Robert than we have that's given true. away. That's true. A lot of Robert is backstory, too. Yeah, so well, yeah. we, but that's also something that we want to hold back. Just like we're not disclosing much about Karen here. But, right, but little details about these things can be slipped into the right, right, right. here and there. You don't need much. But a little thing here and there starts to paint a picture. And and I think that this gives us this vignette style is giving us the space to do that. It gives us the the um, the more broad canvas to paint on. You know? Okay, so any complaints on the... Uh, no, no, not at all. I think you're doing great. Uh, Unfortunately, I, I'm not sure I feel the same way uh, as I wrap it up when we come back from break. Yeah. Um, it, I felt a little rushed, and but I, I, I don't know. It, it was, to me, is ends in a natural place, but I'll let you guys attack well, it. Well, once again, this is a rough draft, you know, and we'll be able to uh, to, to build on it or take away from it as we go. So, uh, you know, I if it didn't end as strong as you like, we can give it a stronger ending later. Like we right. said, these are vignettes. It shouldn't be too, too difficult overall. So, all right, uh, let's come back in a minute, and we'll wrap this up with your next segment. Tear requires tribute. Sacrifice may be made in the form of likes, ratings, and comments at the Dark and Stormy K1 on Twitter, the Dark and Stormy Nights .home .blog, or at Podbean, iTunes, or Google Play Music. All right, so Odin's going to read for us his last segments. All right. And we'll go over those, and then we'll talk about where we go from here. Sounds good. All, All right, right, go ahead, no Odin. Philip was not at the meeting or at any of the others he attended throughout the week. Karen was. First she appeared at his Friday meeting, then at his Sunday meeting. Soon she was at all eight of his meetings, 
Wilhelm never attended so many meetings in his life. Karen continued with her overtures, regardless of how many eligible bachelors pat patroned the meetings. Her dress became more provocative. At least um, at the last meeting, she wore an elaborate feathered ca hat, a capelet, held above her ample bosom with a silver brooch, and a corset that threatened to devour the brooch with her cleavage. Her dress was an elaborate damask, raised and cinched at her sides. Needless to say, the women at the meeting hated her, and the men found it difficult to discuss wear issues unless it could be spun to enhance their manliness. Wilhelm chose to only attend thrice a week, and then, after a time, only on Sundays. He began to notice some of the men were missing. Week after week, there was less men at the Sunday meeting, which was strange considering how many of them seemed to love coming with Karen in attendance. He began asking around at the meetings as they let out if any of them had seen Philip. The only other group that knew, he, knew him hadn't seen him in weeks. Willem then followed up with, were they down any members? The moderator said the numbers always fluctuated in the anonymous groups, but it hadn't in any unusual way. He then asked if Karen was at attending, which, of course, the moderator refused to answer. Right. Anonymous. He realized the other groups might not have told him if Philip was in attendance due to the whole anonymous thing. It seemed that Philip wasn't attending any of the meetings, but how could he be sure? He didn't even know where he lived, but he did know his last name. Hmm. Perhaps he could bribe a clerk at the Department of Taxation. Unfortunately, given the hour, that would have to wait to tomorrow. Then I go on to the next section, which is rather short. Do you need set up, or are you going to go right into it? No, nah, it's be over before we're done Just discussing it. it. All right, hit it. <laughs> Wilhelm set out for the city administration building amidst the early traffic of people leaving their home set for work. A trolley rang loudly beside him and braked. Bollocks. It was Karen. Karen disembarked the electric trolley and waved to Wilhelm with a kerchief in her hand. Wilhelm! She crossed the left lane and came over to him on the sidewalk. Philip is in danger. You must come help she said with concern in her voice, if not in her eyes. I didn't think you knew him, he said incredulously. Speculate. Yes, I, I would strip on that one. Oh, yes. We had a long conversation after you left the pub on our first meeting. Will you help? Of course. Uh, how? Where? William asked with concern growing in his voice. Follow me. Her voice deep and full of satisfaction. The end. Okay, so I have a couple questions. All right. Has Karen figured out that Wilhelm is gay when she's bringing up Philip? Yes. So wh what is... Or at least not interested, Suggested, right? but probably not spelled out nearly well, enough. Well, she's specifically using Philip, so... Is that, if, if you notice, in the Sunday meeting, they're down members. And nobody else is really down members. By this time, Wilhelm only went to the Sunday meetings because he needs the meetings, but he's sick of seeing Karen all the damn time. So what ends up happening is she's poaching people from that group and then she's trying to figure out who who he, see, who he might have interest in and eventually has narrowed it down to philip i see okay um i mean so she's obviously she obviously knows he's avoiding her at this point right? yeah so she set a trap to right. basically take him so she's playing she a wants. hunch when she brings up philip here yes. and he falls for it to be fair it's probably, what, the first person she saw him with, right? Because she meets him in the bar and he's with yeah, Philip. Yeah, but at that point, it, it's almost a duh when it occurs to her. Well, and then... You know what I mean? Like, well, she overlooks he, that for a, quite some time. And then he's asking about meetings. It wouldn't be bad to have her notice that he's asking about Philip at meetings. I don't think that would be... Maybe have her approach as he's talking to, like, the meeting leader about... Well, that's right. why he's going is. after the meetings are over. You know, to, he, he doesn't want to be in other meetings because Karen will just show up. <laughs> right, yeah. I've known those. I've known that girl. <laughs> so and I realized not halfway through, this is starting to feel a little like Fight Club. I, I don't need to go to meetings. Right? right. I mean, that's it, what I was thinking, too. It wasn't intentional, but that's unfortunately... Yeah. I've avoided certain <laughs> bars because of that woman, or you know what I'm saying? Oh, we all have. So. Um, okay, so my only other thought is that when we were talking, when we were plotting out this chapter... We discussed that Wilhelm would have had to have started researching these missing shifters so that when the team figures it out, 
they pick up on right. his research. True, yeah. We so, like, that's out. the only thing that I think that we I, maybe... I didn't... I should include, like, a notebook or something. Yeah, like... Easter egg it a little bit. Yeah, I think it only needs mentioned, though, Yeah, right? I think you're right. Oh, yeah, I don't think that we need to go Damn. into depth yeah, with his research. I forgot about yeah. that. There there I, I had suggested that, and I totally forgot about Damn, that. Damn, I left my notebook. There needs to be something where the team can find it and say, oh, look, he's looking into this. Right. Yeah, like, damn, and I left my notebook or something like that, you know, like, just... His notes. Yeah, a couple... A couple little mentions here or there of the research or what's going yeah, on. Yeah, and I thought about making a dialogue of the whole, he's talking to the other group, but I don't know. I wasn't feeling it at the time. Right. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, we can figure out ways to piece it in there. Yeah, maybe maybe just a little something where he talks to somebody, I'm getting concerned, you know. Yeah. He I mentions it to somebody. Who would he, I think, he most likely can find in Zara. I think maybe so. Like maybe he can bring it up in passing to either Zara or Meredith. I feel like truly, well, if he's going he to look, blown off, yeah. If he's moping, maybe we ought bring in another character. Why not? I mean, it still could be from the perspective. What what could happen here is that because we suggested that maybe Robert would be the one that cues them in that he's missing. Um, so like perhaps when they realize it, they could go through his room, through his notes, through his workshop, whatever Well, it, it might is. not, yeah, it's, uh, sorry about that. It might not be out of character for, or, or, or out of his realm of influence for Robert to maybe flip the pages in a notebook to the investigation. That's you know? true. Right. So suddenly the wind blows, choo, 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 you know, it's open to the page. You know, I mean, I missing? think that, that most I'd likely, if you're so you looking for a missing person, you're discount. going to be specifically looking for the last thing they were working on. Right. You know, so it's it, it would be the obvious step for them to to look at his recent notes or recent diary recording right. or whatever it is, whatever method he uses. Well, that's for, the thing. I, I almost felt this, this as like a mini investigation, but I didn't know how long I wanted to drag it on. And I felt like as soon as he started making headway, it would be a good time to cut him off at the pass. I don't think he did bad. And that's fine. He doesn't. He sh- he can't find the solution, or he can't find the culprit. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, I don't think he did bad at all. That I think that we just need a, lo- a few more Easter eggs as to how the team would know. Uh, yeah, right. I I don't know. I, like I said, I felt what it was rushed, but I know. don't think it was bad at all. Though I think no. you did good with what you had to work with. Like I said, I talked to you a couple days ago, and you didn't have any of this. So. Uh, I'm rather impressed that you got the amount done you did. <laughs> you did cause I'm not sure I could have done it with any confidence. So. Um, okay, so it's good. We have like a couple of things that we just need to squeeze in there, and I don't think that it's much at all. I think that it came out pretty good. Yeah. Wed- so where do we go from here? Because technically, with the f- if we're keeping with the pattern that we're currently doing, next step is the team looks into this issue. Wilhelm's missing. All right, yeah, we're good. Fade to black, right? right. Wilhelm's gone. Wait, right. why w- I'm trying to remember why the was he being abducted to begin with. Because I Karen was summoned for this purpose to in to deal with the team. Oh right, they wanted to weaken the team by taking Wilhelm. They need the, the pig. So in well, Karen chose Wilhelm because her other option was Hammond. Um, <laughs> right, but Wilhelm is their so researcher, Karen's so if they're going to throw any supernatural problems at him. That's he, true. Yeah. I feel like Hammond spends ninety percent of his time in his workshop. She can't access him, so y- Wilhelm's the obvious choice for her. Um, so she's targeting him to try to get in with the team so that she can get that pig. Like her, her job is to deal with the team and get that pig for Desmond. Right. Yeah. So, so it's, yeah, it's get, it's get Dale at all costs. The, pr- the right. problem is, so you're right. It does occur to me that initially we talked about Dale wandering home without Wilhelm, but that wouldn't have happened because mm. she'd have grabbed Dale. That's a good fine. Oh yeah, that can't work. No, but he could. Dale could have gone to unless no, he just got away. That won't work. Dale can may have gone to other shifter meetings. Maybe he's seen Karen. Well, oh, I don't even know if he, that's a good he idea. Could have away, he could have. Wilhelm could have had a moment of bravery here, and you taken know, on Karen and d- and Dale got away. Can you read your very ending again? Where where she gets Wilhelm? Uh, well, it's implied. Okay, can you read it? Okay, well, he's like he's. P- I did, all right. Last couple sentences. All right. I didn't think you knew him. You said incredulously. Inc- Jesus Christ. You just <laughs> want to use that word. Oh, yes. We had a long conversation after you left the pub on our first meeting. Will you help? Of course. How? Where? William asked, with concern growing in his voice. Follow me. Her voice deep and full of satisfaction. Okay. Okay. And then Actually, y- I kind of like that seductive end there. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, uh, okay, but so if Dale was with him, so let's skip how having Dale with him. Dale get home. Okay, but then we need some other way that 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 the crew it's can be. It's got to be Robert. Well, if she grabs him, she's. Oh no, Dale can't be. 
can Dale Dude, cannot be there. There's no way she would get Dale. Yeah, she, she's she, not she incompetent. Knows. This isn't Desmond. I'm he's incompetent, but he is a werewolf. No, no, no. There's an angle he's we're not a looking at. Functional werewolf. Maybe. Is she actually interested in pleasing her master? No, I think that she's bound to Desmond. Yeah, she has to do it. And she this wasn't is in fact, I pick. think that Gin. If I, she wasn't ordered to get the pig, she's not getting the I pig. I think that given the choice, she would kill Desmond over any other team. If she could, but I'm sure the contract... Oh, yeah, the contract well protects enough. Desmond. Right, right. But, unless, but if they unless, unleashed her to attack the team... Unless Jennifer wrote the contract. No, we already said in the last chapter no, that no, Desmond wrote the contract. And that it's, was it's how I created yeah. the loophole, because Jennifer would never have left a loophole right. for the Jorah no, Lumo to would get have. out of. She would have left the loophole that kills Desmond so she can get the book. I know, but Desmond doesn't die. Yeah. We've already decided yeah. that in the general plot. So Desmond oh. wrote the contract so that the Jorogumo does have a way to get out of so it. Jennifer wouldn't want a loophole that could be used against her. So, right. so are we saying then the Jennifer's contract too just smart. says deal with these idiots, or I mean, what, what is it? Is it just? I don't know. We didn't say. Was he All too we said to, to was to cinch this up. I mean, he's overconfident, which is where his loophole comes in. Well, yeah. I mean, she, she's a horror demon. She's not sent to get, gather a pig. Oh, she's meant to. Demon. She's meant to attack the team and the stability of the team and weaken the team. You know? She's meant to so deal she's with doing the team this, so they can get the pig back. They're probably looking for a go-ahead for someone to go take the pig. First off, she's a vaginapreneur. Okay. Oh, Lord. I didn't name her a whore demon. That's literally in the description. <laughs> of Wikipedia. I don't know that it's worded that way, is it? Prostitute demon. It does, say, like it does say whore demon, yeah. No, yeah. does yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. In yeah, one, we are in, reading in very different things. But yes, I get that she was in, a in at least one of the things we said. Yeah, she it did say specifically. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know. Ultimately, <laughs> you can look for loopholes in the contract all you like, and I, I specifically made it written by Desmond so that there were loopholes okay. in it because okay, he's an enough. overconfident narcissist. Um, but at the same time, I also feel like Karen is a very capable demon. If the pig was there. I feel like she would have gotten it. Only if she's interested in pleasing her master. If she wants she's to screw him over. She's not interested in pleasing over, the master. The best thing she could do is let the pig go. If she, if she, especially if Desmond said something that just like really, hey, you didn't really say specifically the pig. Why would he not? Is he that dumb? Are we going with that? I don't know. Well, I, it's not about her dumb. She's literally sent to weaken the team. If he didn't mention she's anything sent about to it, deal with infiltrate. the team. That was Jennifer's point. Was that we need somebody else to handle right, this right, right. team. So if there was no mention of it, even if she knew about it, hell, she'd work against it wherever she could because she doesn't want to be here. I, I, I don't did, know. Yeah, when was the last time you dealt with an angry okay, spirit? Okay, so define the contract here and now so that we don't mess it up in the future. Well, it'd be nice to we'll if we'll they knew to attack Will we, Home. We have two Because if they left it up to her, then she would have, you know what I mean? Then we got to define that. We have two dilemmas. What did the contract say? Mm-hmm. And how does the team know how to find him? I think that Robert is all you need for the team to know. Can he leave the house? And or he doesn't need to leave the how house. How does he? Okay, help although them find I don't see why he couldn't. Is he stuck in the house? Okay, Did we at decide this point, that? How does he help them find? No, him? I, like I said, I think he's tethered to whatever amulet well, that he used to wear that is now in possession of of um, Meredith. Yes. Like he, like he has like a, you know, like yeah, some could be yard pocket radius. pocket watch or something like that, you know. Okay. But she could easily carry that with her everywhere she right, goes. Right, a memento of her husband. It's not unheard of. Right, sure. Right, right. So he always has to be like half a mile from her or something. I don't know. Okay. So here's the thing is that we were talking about how maybe mm. the team is a little bit self-involved and doesn't realize right away that Wilhelm is missing. <laughs> yeah, it should However, be like good three days. Robert would realize that Wilhelm is missing. It'd be interesting. He's also It'd pretty be a quiet, tough thing so to write. He's it might quiet, but work. he operates the job board. All he'd have to do is put up a job that sends them in the right direction. Yeah, maybe. It's it's difficult. Also, we discussed that part of their technology was the fax machine. The text yeah. the uh, teletype thing. Yeah. Telegraph thingy. Yeah, I don't so really, he could give them a message. Hmm. To uh, go through well, that Wilhelm is missing. That Wilhelm needs their help. Maybe he's blowing it up, you know, like, yeah, you know, like you ever have somebody pissed at you and it, they just keep texting the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I get just, the idea. And there's fucking <laughs> there's that that what is it? The teletape piling up on the floor. Yeah, oh God. just keep running it and keep running just it. Ding, ding. Yeah. No, no, no. All the no, no. Keep going up. Yeah. It's know. got some annoying alarm to let you know it's so out of paper. Ultimately, the next <laughs> chapter has to be. Maybe they figure out 
something is controlling these things that's not any member of the team. Yeah. You know? Um, so maybe they start to put together that, that you know, there's a, f- a phantom or, you know, something. Maybe they don't necessarily know yeah, that it's Robert. Yeah, maybe this is where they discover that somebody's guiding them. But this could be where they're starting them. to discover that, yeah, that something is controlling Well, they set it things. up because at the end of the Dale chapter, right, the, the board went, went the off. The board pings, right, when, yeah. Uh, the thing is, though, I, I think the pig could probably do some tracking. Oh, no doubt that he can smell, especially with the amount of time he spent <gasps> with Wilhelm. That's a good point. If if the pig was at one of the meetings where Karen couldn't snatch him from Wilhelm without making herself obvious, maybe before she realized that he was gay, um, we could have it to where Dale recognizes Karen for what she is, but he has no way to tell everybody, right? Because yeah. right? he yeah. can't talk. You're saying so he does the lassie thing? Oink, oink. He's pointing his head that way and trying to walk off. <laughs> or Robert Robert notifies them through the telegraph or the job board that Dale knows the way. I, it might be a combination of any of them. Why do they keep calling us this tea house? The owner doesn't want us here. So that's interesting. Now, I mean, I imagine that she is utilizing the catacombs under London, you know. Yeah. So uh, I, I hadn't really thought about it deeply, but that sounds right to me. You know, which I imagine it also. It seems spidery. Well, yeah. I, I imagine also that the cult, Desmond's cult, is probably utilizing the same catacombs at some point. Well, or we another. talked about putting them in the like the basement of an old cathedral. Right, or right, something. right, right. Which but I catacombs think is accessible do and sewers do it by these sides. catacombs. Absolutely. So they are at one end or another. So she's using it to get around. Yeah, London, that, no, I like that. And he is using a segment of a cistern or something like that to hold his, you know, dark meetings or whatever you want to call them. You know. Yeah, it works for me. Okay. Now, I don't know. Or you want to bridge it all together, but I do feel like when they find Wilhelm, he's naked and half wolf form, and like just like rolling half around. Half wolf. Yeah, because he there's wolf hey, spain wolf all over the floor of his cage. So he, he's sort of like wait, there's what under his, want, his cage? Has, has Karen started like feeding from him? I I think that's how they're keeping him. Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe she's keeping him weak with her venom. So he's mm. just like, you know, like catnip. He's just Maybe rolling he around. It's, it's all, all his way. fur stuck to him and shit. And he's just Catches a fur. Rub, rubbing his face on the, the bars and crap. I don't know. I just think it would be hilarious. I, I, I don't know. It, eh. well, Wilhelm and Payne doesn't really. They always show like Wolfsbane as being like kind of like. Oh, you want to make it catnippy? But I'm saying, yeah, what if it's a narcotic? And it, yeah, I oh. think that would be kind all of All right, hilarious. that like, would be kind of funny if it's not. Harmful to him, like but he's it's purring. Or but something. he's drunk. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, hilarious. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's odd. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's but okay, I imagine a bunch of those desiccated uh, cocoons, like in Skyrim, like hanging oh God, people. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I like it. Or in it, but yes. How, like how many? Unfortunately, like also uses sewers, but you can't get away from it. Yeah, that was Hank. That's that's Hank hanging there. It's <laughs> Hank. He's a good guy. <laughs> I like him. Oh, you've been dragging Wilhelm out while he's like talking about the. See what I mean the with the original ideas? Hanging? Yeah, he's high as hell. Yeah. yeah. Okay, oh. I can see it. Bye, Hank. <laughs> We're leaving now. Okay, so here's what we need to decide: Does the team get Wilhelm back in Chapter Five? Mm. Well, or do we let it hang six, for but, a? Uh, oh, I I'm think sorry, Chapter Six. I'm not yes. sure they do. I'm we not let sure. It, we yeah. let it go. It takes longer than I one think, chapter I to think, get him back. I think they need to get their shit together enough. To yeah, come together yeah, that's a good to do the hunt, uh, you know, to find where he went. These chapters aren't hugely long in text form. Which is fine. So, I'm what not sure they is even the next chapter. I'm what not even exactly sure they make it into the catacombs. I think the next chapter literally just in is research, figuring and out he's together. gone, yeah, and yeah. figuring out where he went. Well, that's not all. Okay, you so need to bring a team full of people who are all independent workers together to research this. Right, yeah. So if we don't go So you need to growth. show That's Meredith's moment of all right, fuckers, get your shit together. Right. I think she's gonna explode. Yeah. I think it's I literally mean, like shut the hell up. Right. And you will listen now. Right. And you need to show Meredith's this moment. Is that scary of, moment. Oh she's gonna kill us. You know Right. <laughs> right. That's fine. I think that it just can't it can no longer be this her letting everything go. She right. needs to decide that's it. These guys need a leader. I right. need to step up. Yeah. And while traditionally we kind of saw Zara as the leader, truly Meredith needs to step into that guidance mentor. Maybe position. push Zara into the well, role. Well, here's the thing. Right. Okay, so it's kind of like the general who doesn't go in the front line. 
very often, right? Right. On the front line, you have your whatever, your captain or whatever mm-hmm. is on the front line, and they lead the troops, right? That's Zara. The general who doesn't like going into co- into battle, <laughs> that's Meredith. You know. Yes, you're exactly right. Like and Meredith, Meredith is like has the to be officer. Like, this is your and the captain. rest of the team. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And you will fucking listen to her, or you Although will suffer my wrath. I think that Meredith can go into the field and should go into the field with them. But the bottom line is, she's not the one who gets her hands dirty. Right. So if I'm understanding, uh, is Chapter Seven then going to be either villains or the dungeon crawl? If this chapter six, I is almost all think set chapter up. seven can be Karen's plans getting foiled. It can be almost from her point of view. And also, how are we going to yeah. handle this rescue? It'd be good to finally disclose who Karen is and all yeah. that, and what the plot was. And so all I that. think okay. chapter seven is Karen. Hold on, though. I have a I have a legit question here. And then on eight, we're moving to the dungeon crawl. I, I am What's a dungeon completely crawl? lost. Yeah, That's where they're DD, going through the catacombs. The sewer kind of thing. No, here's my question. Are we going to defeat Karen and get Wilhelm back? Or are we going the intellect route and saying, Karen, all we have to do is break your bound agreement and I, you can give us I Wilhelm. think both. I think they do a little bit of battle and then like halfway through, like, why are we doing this? <laughs> right. I mean, ultimately, you, she was summoned and forced to do somebody else's bidding. I mean, do you even like these oh people? Oh, my God. Stop, stop. I know. I know what we need to do. Her and Wilhelm need to bond while Wilhelm is oh, that'd be activity. Funny. Oh, that's cute. And Wilhelm's like, oh, listen, girl, I can get you out of this. No problem. I just need my books. We can talk this over. Let's have some tea. <laughs> what What the hell? Did you just make Wilhelm that guy from Ghostbusters 2? <laughs> Why am I dripping, why am with, I dripping goo? with goo? Well, yes, I know, that one. I know why I'm <laughs> dripping with goo. Why are you dripping <laughs> with goo? <laughs> oh, my God. All right, anyway. I, I think it's all doable. No, no, it's great, isn't it? Like, you know, it's kind of like... Uh, it, like brains beats brawn. <laughs> right, and then and then the team walks in just as he's made this revelation. Right. Like, hey, oh, guys, hey, guys. This is my buddy. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, completely foil the whole battle. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. In, it's like, about right, to happen. Da, 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 weapons da, da, da. blazing, and he's like, guys, yeah, I, I have someone for you to meet. Well, no, but I think that Karen <laughs> should, what, command, like, an army of spiders and stuff like that. <laughs> In the so sewers, ew. right? So that they're like fighting their way to her, and then suddenly, oh, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, this is yucky. <laughs> I mean, I see that with their sphere powers, and wow, that's gross. Uh, yeah, I c- okay, yeah, right. Like, maybe I, I kind of hate that you made the Ghostbusters illusion this late because I could have done a Minosh accent. I don't know if I could do a German accent, but whatever the hell Minosh is, I could do that. <laughs> was that what I was doing? I don't know. I don't know. It, it felt slightly like German. Him. I, I don't know. It's like vaguely Eastern European. I don't know what he's it's supposed Vigo. to be. Vigo. I don't know what it is. It's Vigo. <laughs> he's Carpathian. I was just rapidly trying to fall into the Wilhelm thing. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. What do you guys think of that? I don't know. I dig it. I like that they, there's this build up and it's like, this is where we're going and let's go save Wilhelm. And then it's like, no, there's no battle. We're right, all right. friends now. Yeah, we're okay. <laughs> let's fix this. <laughs> She's going to come live with us for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I dig it. I think it's hilarious. Like so it's this huge letdown. It's like you reach this climax and oh, there's nothing. But that's <laughs> well, that would be kind of funny. Okay, so they're all set to and you know they're all set to do combat and they're firing. Meredith's yeah, they're, 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 they're surrounding weapons. her. Oh, dude, we just need to like load Hammond down with weapons and gear. <laughs> no, no, well, it's funny, right? We, they, we've wor- we've worked this all out. It's it's all yeah, subtle. They bust right? into oh, no, the no, room. We're good. <laughs> Hammond takes out a couple of large bats Somehow and, and he's got a spiders in the room in and everything like that. He's like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> but we have, like, the whole team, like, come together, and it's this, like, epic moment. It's like, oh, wait, that's not needed. We're good. We're good. Yeah, right, right. Good. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I yeah, total it. blue ball. Yeah, exactly. There's no, like, gratification at the end of that. I think it's hilarious. So, all right. So the hard part, of course, I think, is bringing them together. Yeah. Right. So we bring the team <laughs> together. We kind of, we kind of like, I don't know. Yeah, it's going to have to be that. that like chapter six is going to have to be this bonding, like take charge, get everything. And like everybody prepping, like have Hammond be like, I'm going to build the best thing yet. And, you know, everybody's getting all like gung ho. Like really, you need to get the build up in there. And I think that's going to be a little difficult, but I mean, also well, fun. The, the, the heart. Well, first off, I've got to explain that we know he's missing. Right. And how we know where he is. Right. And then you keep getting the hard chapters. I think yeah, I do. Man. <laughs> Screw you guys. Uh, 
Well, on top of that, though, I think that the initial reaction is everybody doing their own thing to save him. I don't think that, that anybody uh, denies that he needs saved. But I think everybody's going to want to try and do their own thing. And maybe that's where Meredith kind of comes in and says, no. Yeah. Stop. Well, like, she's going to have to lose her shit, I think. Yeah. I, I don't fully agree. Uh, because, okay, they're all friends. Uh, they may not be a cohesive group, but one of their friends was taken. What I do think, instead of separate investigations, they might all go out as a mob, but everyone's got a different idea of who's in charge or how to best go about it. But I don't think that they're all going to be in separate investigations because they're out for blood. They took in one of our own. I it's think they're just banging mentality. heads, not necessarily. Right. You know, okay, Infighting. maybe the funnier thing then is Hammond tries to tell Mayor or tell tries to tell. He comes up Zara, with his master plan. All she right, comes Zara, up with you take yeah. flank or something like that. Oh, Wait, Lord. what? <laughs> no, no. Right, because ultimately he's he's the weapons expert, but she's the muscle. Right. So yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting. So you don't think though that they're going to try and go their own directions to do it? It's just they're going to come together and not. I do think it they're all well, going to have a different idea in their head, they but could. maybe they don't actually take off on that. Like sure. Meredith is kind of a spy rogue. I could see her just leaving, doing like investigation. I think they're all going to be equally upset. And then she comes upset, back though. around and like, where the hell did she go? As she much as she's there. As much as they're an incohesive group, I do think they care about each other. I'm not against. I mean, we've talked about some some. Some background stuff that we're not necessarily going to reveal on the show because it's going to be side stuff. Maybe, you know, short stories that will pair with this or whatever. Right. But I'm not necessarily uh, against Meredith dipping into her external resources that won't necessarily be a major part of right. this main story. Yeah, I could see, like, two groups. Like, one main group and, like, someone splitting off to do, let me go handle this and see what right. I can work at this angle. I can yeah. see that. But I don't see them all going 20 different directions. Okay. They're too angry, and they're all friends. So we have to stop it before so it gets there, maybe. Y- y- you know, so it, I think it, you it, need to show an emotional aspect of, of, well, first of all, they need to figure out what happened. You need to show the emotional aspect of, we really do care about each other. Right. And then you need to show them kind of, everybody is trying to throw in their best, and Meredith really needs to step up and be like, look, you guys are going to fuck this up. Let's come together. This was what needs to happen. Right. Yeah. She's going to have to step up and, and really kind of take her mentor role seriously. Sure. Yeah, there's it's no doubt th- that she's going to have to come out. And, and you know what's funny is when we designed this whole thing, when we first came up with these characters and everything, I really did not see Meredith as this you know, front and center role. I saw it as Zara. You know, I don't think she is front and center, though. I think she's the backbone. Well, but I don't think that she's really the in-your-face one. Well, I, I always saw, saw Meredith as that big gun waiting to go off. She's the louder know? one, yes. She, it, Mer- Meredith was the one who it was just, when you need me, I can kill everybody in the room. And I, th- yeah, you know? I think that's the case. <laughs> but not is until that, then. Is that Meredith doesn't step up into the spotlight unless she has to. Right. Um, yeah, but I mean, like, you know. But she still plays a very important role. To make yeah. a poor analogy, I mean, you need your Captain America and the uh, Archer guy and all them to stand in front <laughs> and distract The Archer everyone. guy. He doesn't even Hulk get guy. a real Hulk name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, you were right the first time. Well, Hulk powers up. <laughs> you, you, you need all these big, loud people to distract and engage the other team when the assassin's coming around. Um, uh, yeah, the, coming uh, up from uh, behind. Uh, You're right. Yeah, uh, the... Oh, jeez. The Russian one. Um, Black Widow? Yes, Black Widow. Oh, I'm having a brain fart all over the place. I but know, she's she, hot. But, yeah, while they're all attacking, she's the one who's, like, grabbing and, like, strangling people off scene. She's thinning the ranks from behind. That's Th- Meredith's I mean, that's, role. Yeah, I, that's the thing. She's the one you don't expect. That's her whole yeah. character, you know, persona. I mean, she can't kill anyway, everyone in the room so if they, if that they know she's That's what it. you need to do, is you need to make the team figure out what happened. They need to start to come together, and they all need to really, like, gear up and, like, have this epic, like, build-up of this is what we're going to do. All right, so am I bringing this next week, or...? I mean, I feel like we can also do some more plotting of the next few chapters, because right now we're at a dead end. Chapter 6, 7, and 8 really need to be plotted out. Okay, so do you want to do those first, or do you want me to come with something? Maybe I can break it into two parts. I mean, that's fine. You want to get the beginning of the chapter, have them Maybe. figure out what yeah, happened, because and then from there we, we build some more okay, plotting. Okay, yeah, so there's really what we're saying. There's two parts of chapter six. Figure out yes, what happened. Yes, at least, yes. And then come together. Come together and start preparing. That's two parts of start chapter preparing six. Start preparing for an epic battle that will never happen, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they can get all the way to the sewer grate, but then it has to end. Well, and we'll see. I think it's a great idea that it yeah. never happens. But we don't know until we get there, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean things keep changing. Things, things kind of flow as they come. So, all right. Is everybody happy with what we've come to? I, I mean, think so. All right. Yeah. We'll talk to you guys next week. Greetings, Thanks. dames and knights. Good night. If you like what we do, follow us on Twitter 
at the dark and stormy k1 or our website at the dark and stormy nights dot home dot blog or you can rate us on podbean google play music or itunes 